Thank you for tuning in and welcome back team. In today's episode of Real Estate Facts, you'll learn six reasons why pending home sales fall through. My name is Andrew Finney, your real estate geek. If you need help finding a top agent where you live, or if you simply want to drop me a line to say hello, my contact info is below. If you already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel now and like this video. Thank you. Okay, team, so let's talk about this. This is a question I get a lot from both buyers and sellers. So this is like a mixed video, mixed bag of nuts here to give you the six top reasons why when you see a home that was so gorgeous, it went under contract super quick and then it fell through. It leaves you wondering and it leaves you reeling what was wrong with it. It arouses suspicion. What was wrong with the neighborhood? What was wrong with the home? Was there something wrong with the price? Was there something wrong about the home inspection? Well, let's go ahead and get those questions answered today. So whether you're a prospective buyer or prospective seller, this video is for you. The number one reason that home sales go bad is actually something called buyer's remorse. In other words, a buyer got really emotionally involved, hot and heavy over a property and they didn't keep their logic about them. They allowed their emotion to cloud their judgment and they just didn't listen to themselves and they got caught up in maybe a multiple bid, made a decision uh, to move forward on a contract that they really just didn't want to do at the end of the day. And the way that this would normally, the way that you normally see this happen is during the what's called buyer due diligence phase. And buyer due diligence for reference is a very important aspect of the closing process, though it should not be abused. And it's something that I count so both the uh, buyers that I work with and the sellers that I work with just to let them know what buyer due diligence is. If you're canceling because you know you woke up on the wrong side of the bed, then you shouldn't have been buying a home to begin with. Just my honest opinion. Get out of the market until you can get serious and come back in. Uh, if you have commitment issues, hey, that's another reason, right? True buyer's remorse is something whenever you're like, maybe you offer to pay $5,000 above appraised value, or maybe you waived a contingency that you really want, weren't comfortable and you knew better than to waive to begin with, like a home inspection contingency or something. So when that happens, pretty much underneath the buyer due diligence for anything, for, for so many different reasons, a buyer could cancel a contract. Now, it's also important for the seller to know that when they accept that contract, and that comes back to the strength of both the buyer agent and the uh, letting a buyer know about the home buying process and how it works, and also the strength of the listing agent uh, to negotiate on the seller's behalf with the buyer agent and vet out the buyer themselves and their financing and make sure that everything's legit. This goes into a lot of different things, but number one is buyer's remorse. The second one is home inspections. And that's the number two reason why pending sales go bad. So to an untrained eye, many homes essentially look the same. There are four walls, a floor, and a roof. Four walls, floor, and a roof, right? But to a home inspector, every little crack, every little spot, every little ounce of anything to do with the property becomes an issue. They see it with like superhuman eyes and it could spell trouble. So, you know, there are systems and stuff that do fail, They're like HVAC systems, uh, water conditioners, water softeners, hot water heaters. I mean, there are things that could be actually problematic, falling roofs, uh, holes in the roof. Um, if you have a basement, a wet and damp uh, basement, all of those things could be a problem, right? Could be a really big problem. And that would definitely be a justifiable reason to back out of an escrow if the seller was unwilling to repair them you, or the buyer was doesn't have the money to repair it themselves or can't get a compensating credit. Now, normally what happens in such a case is just that. A seller will do one of two things. Either they will offer the fix it on whenever you ask them for it or they'll offer to reduce their price or provide you with a credit towards your buyer closing cost to offset the expense that you may have uh, to incur in getting that fixed. You know, uh, consider some of the things that people come up with, you know, if somebody's told that like a water heater is bad or something, they may be asking for like $3,000 to replace a water heater. Well, most water heaters only cost $800 to $1,200. So, I mean, that's where a buyer has to be reasonable about this and understand what the true cost of replacing a water heater is. And if the seller has a home warranty on the house at the time, they may just be paying for a deductible to get an all brand new water heater in there. What's more important to you if you're buying the house, getting the new water heater or getting a price that's not reasonable and possibly losing the house over? Just saying. Okay, the third reason is actually low appraisals. Now, it's kind of fun uh, to call something a low appraisal in my opinion because an appraisal is an appraisal. Uh, an appraiser's job is to go out and assign a value to the property. A real estate agent's job when listing a property is to do their best to 
take a look at the average sales and provide what's called a comparative market analysis and they have an honest to God conversation with a seller about the realistic value of their home. It's the appraiser's job to actually go out there and say, yes, this is the value of the home. It's important to note that buyers cannot get more loan than the appraised value. This is because a bank is not going to lend more money than what the value of the property is. So when you have an appraisal issue, what comes up are a few different options. Number one, the buyer has the chance to pay the difference of the appraised value and the uh, sales price out of pocket. That's going to be over and beyond everything else and becoming adding on to this backside of your buyer closing costs. Uh, more commonly, what I what I sometimes see is actually people going 50-50. So let's say that a property was uh, under contract for $300,000 and the appraiser went out and appraised the property for $290,000. What I've seen in practice more commonly is a buyer saying, hey, I'll come up 5,000 if they have the financial ability to do so. And the seller say, I'll come down 5,000. Now, the best case scenario with a, an appraisal issue is doing the right thing or what I believe as a professional and as a person is the right thing to do. And that's the seller reducing the property to the appraised value. And the the reason that that's the right thing to do is because when you get ready to sell your home, you're probably buying one, aren't you? How would you like somebody else to do that to you? And you say, well, I, I, I just wouldn't have got myself into a position to begin with. Well, did you think you were going to be in that position to begin with whenever a buyer offered on your house? Probably not. Things happen. So by putting good energy in the world and everything, good energy will come back to you. Doing the right thing means that people do the right thing for you. So it's about doing, uh, being reasonable here and being realistic as far as the price is concerned and not really trying to hurt anybody. I mean, yeah, the seller wants to get as much money as possible. Buyer wants to get the best price possible. Common heads and le levity provide a lot of value in a negotiation and helping people get both sides taken care of happily and on a win-win basis. Something to think about, okay? The fifth reason is actually like a mortgage loan rejection. And you're probably thinking, well, Andrew, how's that possible if the buyer had a pre-approval letter up front and now we're in an escrow and it's dropping? Because this happens about 33% of the time. One of the biggest reasons home sales go bad is the, the lender cannot make good on the loan. And this could happen for a couple of different reasons. The first biggest reason that I see it happen is that the lender actually didn't do what they were supposed to do. Uh, they didn't do an income. They didn't verify the uh, buyer's income, their assets, their credit, and their employment situation. They didn't do that, and they didn't put it through like a direct underwriting or talk to their underwriter about it to make sure that the numbers check out in reality. I have seen this in practice more times than I can count, and it actually makes me want to vomit and disgust because it's a lack of, it's just, it's just shouldn't happen. So if you don't have your income, assets, credit, and employment verified, then you don't have a pre-approval letter. Even if it looks and smells and tastes like a pre-approval letter, if that's not done, then you're going to have a very difficult time closing on that property, if at all. Like I said, this generally accounts for a third of all drops whenever a pending home sale goes bad. So it's very, very significant. It reiterates the importance of having a trusted real estate advisor that is a top agent working with you. And it also underlines the value of being introduced to a loan officer that's worth their soul and that's a top uh, loan officer in the area that's a local loan officer that you can sit down with have a conversation with and that the the your buyer agent can talk to them and the listing agent can call them or pay their office a visit and make sure that everything is on the up and up moving forward it's one of those little details that equal huge pain and huge loss if not paid attention to correctly. It's best to trust the process. It's best to trust the people that you're working with by first doing your research on those people to make sure that you have the right people on your team. So doing so will alleviate that issue. The second most common reason why financing would blow up is actually on the buyer. A uh, buyer made a stupid mistake. Uh, and, and may or may not have known they were making a stupid mistake at the time. And I'll give you a for instance on this. So a for instance that happens is buyers get really excited when it's, as they get closer and closer to closing on their home. They'll think well, about what they want in their home. Maybe they need a new refrigerator. Or maybe they need a washer and dryer or they want some home furnishings. So they're going to run out to their local store and go get store credit or get a credit card and charge it up with these new home furnishings or items that they need. Big mistake because depending on what their debt to income ratios look like, it could throw their ratios out of whack. And unless they can return that stuff in a hot minute, they're going to have a problem. And or it could have already done the damage and it's going to cancel because 
uh, they made that mistake. So best course of action is not buying anything or not changing anything about what you're doing as a buyer whenever you're in the closing process and when you first talk to a loan officer to get your pre-approval. Don't throw the wild card in there because if you do, you go out and buy a truck. I hope you really, really love that truck because it just became your new home if you're not careful. So uh, that's that's the second reason why that could also happen. So pay attention to what you're doing. Like here at the Andrew Finney team in Las Vegas, Nevada, the buyers that we represent and work with will always know ahead of time because our great local loan officers that we work with will also share it with them. So a buyer that works with us is actually knowing what they should be doing and shouldn't be doing through the entire process because we let you know. And it's not like bam, 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 do this, do this, do this, don't do that, don't do that. that. It's more of a friend to friend conversation. Like, hey, if you wanna close on this home, you, you don't want to do this because this could really hurt you. What you should be doing is this. And a lot of people are very receptive and very happy with that information because they simply didn't know. So it's an avoidable mistake. The sixth reason that uh, pending sales go bad is because the offer was actually pending or contingent upon them selling their home. And this is something you're going to see more and more frequently as we move forward in real estate where you have what I call movers, right? We're going to call them movers. We have somebody that has a home they need to sell to be able to buy a home. So they write an offer subject to the sale of their current property to get into the new home. It can be a little bit tricky if you don't have the right agent working with you on this and the right kind of loan officer that's backed them up with financing on, on the purchase site. But that is something that happens, you know. So the best course of action, if you're looking at, if you're watching this right now and you're a seller and you're contemplating accepting an offer that's contingent upon the sale of another, what you want to do is you want to make sure they're first in escrow. That's number one. Have your listing agent find out if the buyer is currently in escrow on the home that they're selling. That's number one. Number two, where are they in the closing process? Are they in an inspections phase? Are they at the appraisal phase? Or have they already done it? Ideally, they will have already cleared the buyer due diligence, already cleared the home inspection and the home appraisal phase to make sure that they're good to go. Because normally when you get into the closing process, after the first two to three weeks, the deal becomes extremely imminent at that point, barring any stupid mistakes that we mentioned in the first five uh, reasons pending sales go bad. So at that point in time, if you were going to uh, accept a buyer's offer contingent upon the sale of another, that would be what you would want to know. Those are two critical things. Again, the escrow number and where are they in the closing process. If you're a buyer, on the other hand, and you're talking about wanting to write an offer on a house subject to uh, the sale of your property, fine and dandy. Be in escrow. There's a lot of other tips that go into this about movers, uh, so to speak, whenever you're planning out a purchase and a sell at the same time. I am designing content right now for reference specifically around this scenario to share the multiple host of options that you can take and the different approaches and negotiation strategies that you can do. Each one of them are going to be highly unique and dependent upon your specific requirements and situation, whether they're going to be... Um, something that you're going to have an option of doing or not but i will make other videos about that to better help out because i know this is a really real issue a really big one right now in the market and i i really think it's going to keep continuing here anyways here's the fun part of the video you tell me what you think of this and what point which one of these six points shocked you the most or you got the most from from this episode tell us in the comment section below was it actually the first point that contracts go bad because of buyer's remorse was it a surprise to that maybe low appraisals or appraisal issues can turn a sale sour? Or perhaps it was the sixth point, which we're gonna see a lot more of, uh, the buyer's offer was contingent upon them selling their own and the deal fell apart on their selling side, so it fell apart on the buying side. Tell us about it along with any of your savvy tips you would like to share with us about why home sales go bad and how to avoid them in the comment section below, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and put my contact information up if you'd like to reach out to me just to drop me a line to say hello, absolutely love to hear from you. At the same time, if you need help finding a top agent where you live, whether a buyer agent or a listing agent, send me a direct email, please. Thank you. So if you haven't already done so, I'm going to ask you to do three things. Number one, please subscribe to this channel. Number two, please like this video. And number three, please share this video around with someone you know it's gonna be able to help. Thank you so much team for watching today. In between now and next time, I'm wishing you and yours a lifetime full of love, wealth, abundance, and happiness. See you soon.